As our observing instruments improve, we are able to see ever further into the cosmos. With the aid of gravitational lensing and new analyzing techniques, we are now able to detect galaxies in sub-millimeter range as far away as Z3. Comparing images over time, it would appear that these galaxies are tending to move closer together and are disappearing from detection, indicating incredible peculiar velocity towards the cosmic microwave background. When we look at the data more closely and apply corrections to fit our current theories, this peculiar velocity becomes less dramatic. As an amateur though, I decided to have a go at interpreting what could cause the visual effect. Imagine this line travelling at the speed of light across a galaxy like our Milky Way. It would take about 100,000 years to get from one side to the other. Imagine now that it is a flash of light from Betelgeuse going supernova. It would race away from us at the speed of light, but as space stretches in the future, that light travelling through the stretching space will speed up relative to our position, but it does not exceed the speed of light in any frame of reference. That light in the future will have a velocity relative to the source greater than the speed of light. If we use light to measure distances, future distances are relatively shorter than past distances. This time the arrow remains at the speed of light relative to the observer. We receive past light at the speed of light. What this now indicates is the differential between the recessional velocity of the galaxies and their local space relative to the constant speed of light over increasing distances from the observer. The recessional velocity of the galaxies that it now crosses are receding ever faster with distance. At x, this recession is equal to the speed of light. From then on, the space and the galaxies it contains are receding faster than light relative to the observer. x marks the interface between luminal recession and superluminal recession and we call this the Hubble Sphere. To an observer, indicated here by the red circle, all distant galaxies are receding away. The further away from the observer, the greater the recessional velocity. This linear relationship between distance and velocity is known as the Hubble constant. The average increase in velocity is calculated to be 74 Point three kilometers per second per megaparsec. At a far enough distance, the recessional velocity will become equal to the speed of light. This interface between luminal and superluminal recession is known as the Hubble sphere. In a universe that has always been accelerating, galaxies will be crossing this interface. The Hubble Sphere is not a special place, it is just a distance relative to the observer. If we move the observer to a different galaxy, we move the Hubble Sphere. As the galaxies recede away from the observer, they cross this Hubble Sphere. The colour change in the left of the diagram represents this interface. A photon from a distant galaxy will take longer to reach an observer than one from a closer galaxy. But we also have to consider that distant galaxies are moving away faster. This time two photons are emitted to indicate an event of one second. We can see that an identical event from the receding galaxy B will appear longer to the observer. In this image we see a galaxy receding past the Hubble Sphere. Any photons that leave the galaxy after it has passed the Hubble Sphere will never be seen by the observer as it is carried along by superluminal space. 
The more distant the galaxy, the older the light, the longer the events appear to take. Time will appear to stand still when a galaxy reaches the Hubble sphere. Now you may think that the galaxy will disappear as it passes the Hubble sphere with no further light able to outrun the receding space, but you'd be wrong. The cosmic microwave background radiation is light from way beyond the Hubble sphere and we can detect this. We can still see the galaxy, but instead of aging slower, it will appear to get younger as we receive the photons in reverse time order. A similar thing can be heard with sound here on Earth. If shot at with a high velocity rifle, we hear the bullet before we hear the gunfire. Modern tanks have high velocity shells and in this example an observer at X will hear the event in a different order than what is seen. The numbers indicate the sound of the shell going through the air produced 1, 2, 3 and heard at X 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. First the tank fires. The shell is in the air for less than a second and the target is hit. The first sound will be the target blowing up. Then we hear the shell travelling through the air for a full 24 seconds before we hear the tank fire last of all. In 1675 the Danish astronomer Ole Romer first estimated that light had a finite velocity with astronomical observations of Jupiter and one of her moons, Io, that are of interest to us here. Observing the transit of Io, he noticed that the ellipse times were earlier when Earth was closest to Jupiter at opposition, and then, at conjunction, when Earth was at its furthest, the ellipse time would be later. The delay time at conjunction was due to light taking a finite time to travel the greater distance. Ole Roma was using Io's orbit like a giant celestial clock. If we were to consider this celestial clock as being correct at opposition, then at conjunction it would be 22 minutes slow. Whilst travelling from conjunction, we would see that Io's orbit would gradually appear to speed up so as the celestial clock would be correct again at opposition. Then, as Earth travels away from Jupiter, Io will appear to slow down. If we now consider we were in a spacecraft and were to keep on travelling away from Jupiter, Io would appear to keep on slowing down ever slower. Just like when the transit of Io slows down when we are moving away from Jupiter, the rotation of a galaxy will appear to slow down with ever increasing recessional velocities. Imagine that we are looking at this galaxy as it approaches our Hubble sphere. It will slow to a standstill when it reaches the Hubble sphere and then as it goes beyond the Hubble sphere it will appear to rotate in the opposite direction. So any movement beyond the Hubble sphere will appear to be occurring in reverse time order, like film played backwards, with events appearing to speed up in reverse the closer the objects are to our visible horizon. In this short clip from BBC's Horizon program, Is Everything We Know About the Universe Wrong? We see an animated representation of the galaxies that are thought to be rushing towards the cosmic microwave background Considering the cosmic microwave background as the ultimate reference frame, their velocity inferred by this visible movement would appear to be peculiar to the Hubble flow. And it's dragging everything towards a single point. This mysterious phenomenon is known as dark flow. And it shouldn't be happening. If we play the film backwards, we see the galaxies move away from the cosmic microwave background and with the expansion of space. Although we always see recession as a movement away from us, the observer, the visual reverse time order effect way beyond the Hubble sphere will visually speed things up. With better equipment, 
we may in the future see this accelerated look back time effect reveal galaxies forming in reverse time order. From Hubble sphere to the cosmic microwave background, redshift changes from Z1 to Z1000. The galaxies disappear into a far greater distance than current theories predict. So the conundrum of how galaxies that are visible now are disappearing due to accelerating expansion is simple. They get younger until they morph back into the cosmic microwave background, the way they formed and become part of the cosmic microwave background radiation that we detect now. A large area containing a lot of mass, like a large galaxy or galaxy cluster, can distort the surrounding space, making a kind of celestial magnifying glass, distorting the older light from behind it. This gravitational lensing effect can be used by astronomers to see ever further into the past. Although it can give multiple images or Einstein rings, these distortions can be corrected with a resulting image that can have up to 50 times magnification. This helps the dark flow detection. Although I believe we will see this dark flow effect everywhere that we can look back far enough, the apparent anisotropic effect that we see now may be due to gravitational lensing revealing this unexpected effect. I believe we should consider a model of the universe where time undergoes time dilation over time. With the speed of light constant, the visible horizon will decrease as light from the past has further distances to travel. The volume of the universe that we can detect the most distant light from would be getting smaller as past distances increase. It is an impossibility to see the horizon get smaller. So what we see is space stretching as past distances are getting longer and time relative to now was shorter making tomorrow's distances relatively shorter and time relatively take longer. The cosmic microwave background may be stationary in time but not in distance for it is continuously revealing an area of space that was once closer to us the observer at that moment in time. Thank you for listening to my ideas. I hope they may be useful to more knowledgeable and professional people.